Alhamdulillah 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 Alladhi qasama bil mawti riqab al-jababira Wa kasara bihi zuhur al-akasira Wa qasara bihi amal al-qayasira Alladhina lam tazal qulubuhum an dhikri al-mawti nafira Hatta jaahum al-wa'adu al-haqq fa'ardahum fi al-hafira فنقلوا من القصور إلى القبور ومن أنس العشرة إلى وحشة الوحدة ومن التمتع بالطعام والشراب إلى التمرغ في التراب فانظر هل وجدوا من الموت حسنا وحرزا أم وجدوا من دونه حجابا وعزا فانظر هل تحس منهم من أحد أو تسمع لهم ركزا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله له الإنعام بالنعم الظاهرة وله الانتقام بالنقم القاهرة وله الشكر في السماوات والأرض وله الحمد في الأولى والآخرة وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الذي جاء بالمعجزات الظاهرة والآيات الباهرة فصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعض فيا أيها الإخوة المؤمنون أيتها الأخوات المؤمنات سلام الله تعالى عليكم ورحمته وبركاته قال الله تبارك وتعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا صدق الله العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى tells us property and children are the adornment of the life of this world and the eternal things and the righteous things are better in the sight of your Lord and better in giving hope. In a sense, this is the essence of the form of life that the Sunnah invites us to. This lifeboat which the Holy Prophet وسلم, summons us to amidst the storm of the world and its ignorance and its pessimism and its passions and its disasters, the lifeboat of the Sunnah. And we're told that the adornment of this world, and remember there is nothing wrong with the adornment of this world in itself, in due measure. Property, children, the Holy Prophet والسلام, loved his daughters part of the decoration of this world. We are not monks and nuns. We do not run from it. We are in it. But we are not of it. And we are not subject to its authority. Unfortunately, some people are subject to its authority. In this age in which the love of wealth has become a new and poisonous religion, when the old times of Fir'aun seem to have come again, extremes of inequality. I was reading about Tutankhamun and his mask. You can see it in the Egyptian Museum. A young king, a teenager, died, it seems, when his chariot upended and his wounds killed him. Ah, but they gave him this golden mask. More than 10 kilos of the purest gold, high carat gold. Precious jewels, obsidian, lapis lazuli, turquoise, one of the world's most famous artworks. But where is he? The Quran says some people think that their wealth will make them live forever. But behind that mask, Nature took its course. The pharaoh rotted away. And for 3,500 years, behind that golden mosque, there was only corruption. 
But in Egypt, there were the poor, the starving, the needy. It was as if the whole civilization of Fir'aun used every aspect of the culture just to give the pharaoh a nice death and a nice time after death. This is the opposite of the prophetic way. For every Fir'aun there is a Musa. For every Nimrod there is an Ibrahim. And this expresses itself in terms of the crazy accumulation of wealth and the courageous defense of those whose hands are empty. At this time of year, the end of the year, Muharram just beginning, of course our thoughts turn to the time of the Hijrah of the Chosen One, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who could have had everything that he wanted in his city, but chose instead to be with the poor and to be for the poor, to be prophetic and not to be pharaonic, to be with Bilal and Abu Dhar and Sumayya, and not to be with Abu Sufyan and Abu Lahab and Abu Jahl. And he left his city and he comes to Medina as the noblest of all refugees, as the exemplary asylum seeker, and he comes with his closest friend, as Siddiq, radiallahu an. And they come with nothing, nothing in their hands, but everything in their hearts. And what is in their hearts is going to change the world in a way that no pharaoh of any dynasty could ever do. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, famous for his generosity and for his trusting love in the Chosen One, salawatullahi wa salamu wa alayhi. The Sahaba were bringing out their wealth and giving their wealth. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an gave all of his wealth. No one else did this. Everything. And the Holy Prophet asked him, ما أبقيت لأهلك? What have you left for your family? And he says, Allah wa Rasuluh. Allah and his messenger. And that trust was vindicated. Look at the glorious destiny of the man. Look at the way in which humbly we recall him and greet him when we go to Medina Munawwara. Which of the pharaohs is humbly greeted? Not one. Not one. Is one of them remembered positively for all of his wealth and his splendor? Not one. They rot away in their pyramids. Tourists take selfies, but nobody wishes really to remember them. But the great ones are the people of sacrifice. Now we notice that some of the earliest messages of the Holy Qur'an are about the poor and are about poverty. Along with Tawheed, there is the call for justice. So many of the first ayat of the Qur'an to be revealed are talking about hmm, the wretches who monopolize wealth while the poor go hungry at their doors. So many surahs like that. Woe betide every slinking traducer who gathers up wealth and then counts it. He's on his iPhone seeing what his bank balance is doing today. That's important for him. That's his life. But the Holy Prophet وسلم, offers us this radical teaching. And this teaching is not really what we call nowadays oh, left wing or right wing. It's from a different universe that is about the wings of the heart. Khawf and Raja. That which we give so that we may fly. That which is not just about equality in this world, but which is about purification of the self. So we remember also at this time, the poverty of the Ahlul Bayt, Muharram reminds us of this, the beauty of the poverty of the wedding of Ali and Fatima. When you consider the blessed progeny, so many stars that flowed from that union down to the present day, but there was almost nothing in their house. 
just a sheepskin, a striped Yemeni blanket, that was it. But their hearts were rich, and it was this that gave them their happiness. So at this time of year, very often, many of us think about zakat. Sometimes we give it out in Ramadan, sometimes at the end of the year, sometimes Muharram, as long as it's once a year that we think and we dig deep. Zakat is one of the five pillars, one of the regular pillars. The prayer is five times a day, the Hajj is once in a lifetime, Ramadan and the Zakat once a year. And it's an obligation. And the Qur'an says it's an obligation because that does not actually belong to you in the first place. Even if it's showing in your account. <laughs> Those who have in their wealth a known right which belongs to the beggar and to the deprived. 2.5% of that money that's there in your account at the end of the year is not yours belongs to the homeless, belongs to the poor. And the zakat is really important because ours is the religion of mercy, and ours is the religion of justice, and ours is the religion of brotherhood. Zakat we need to think about. But remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so many blessings. We do not just experience the light and the acceptance of our good deeds in the next world. We don't have to wait years, decades to see them. But after them in this world, we also receive a reward, which is a lightening of the heart. If we do these things well, we feel better. And if you give money in sadaqah to somebody who you know really needs it, there is a certain blessing and a certain lightness and a certain reassurance. And that guilt about the inequality and your own privilege is assuaged. That person has taken his right. In the city of Cambridge, this also applies. 2017, national survey was done about inequality in British cities. And which city in England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland has the greatest inequality? Cambridge, our own city. And we're not off the hook here because we're people of Cambridge, we're part of the economy and part of the moral economy this means us as well. But it's quite extreme. And it doesn't seem to matter if at the Guildhall it's the Conservatives or the Liberal Democrats or Labour, none of them really seems to have practically solved this. The most unequal city in the United Kingdom. What an irony. 90 Nobel Prize winners associated with the University of Cambridge, all of those great brains, but they can't really fix this. Silicon Fen, Microsoft, Apple, all of that cleverness, but they can't really fix this on their doorsteps. Some of you may remember the media item a few months ago last winter when a homeless woman gave birth in the snow in the centre of Cambridge to two baby twins right next to Trinity College. Trinity College with its people go there from around the world to study development human development, economic development, and yet we can't sort out this extreme problem. This is going to be worse this winter. And I hope that as a community, all the mosques together, others as well, we can form a plan as to the coming crisis. There is fuel poverty, energy inflation, the average annual energy bill in the UK is already looking like £3,800 a year and people are going to take cold showers, they're not going to cook hot meals for their children, they're going to shiver in the winter, they have no choice. And here in Cambridge, well, there will be suffering here as well. It's depressing to realise that between the richest ward in Cambridge and the poorest ward, the difference in life expectancy is 10 years. That's more than the difference in life expectancy between Britain and Algeria. We think this is some kind of north-south, third world thing. Right here, our fault, our responsibility. So this mosque, alhamdulillah, with its good-hearted community, needs to start thinking. 
There are local charities, local food banks, there's Cambridge 2030 and other coalitions of people who are looking out for what's going to happen this winter. The catastrophe of inflation, fuel prices, everything is looking set for a perfect storm. So let's show that we are the community not just of Solet, but also the community of Zakat. Not just out of duty, but out of love. Let's be khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas. The best of people brought out for mankind. Let people point to this mosque not just as a fancy building, but as a place where people care. This has to be the next stage. A mosque is the people within it, not its form. And let us remember this challenging reality that the Chosen One Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us to love the poor. He himself chose to live with them. He prayed to be resurrected fi zumratil masakin in the company of the destitute. The destitute, the masakin, according to a hadith, are those whose income is simply not enough to cover their outgoings, their basic needs. And he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in a hadith narrated by Abu Huraira, Inna al fuqara yadkhulun al jannata qabla al aghliya bi khamsi mi'ati am. The wealthy, not the poor, enter paradise before the rich by 500 years. It's a long wait. What can we do about this? Show that we are human, show that we care, notice, deal with things. This may involve, for instance, dealing with some of the exacerbating factors in homelessness, such as the alcohol trafficking that goes on. I was once given a ride by a taxi driver in Cambridge. And he says, do you know why I'm riding this, driving this taxi? I used to own a restaurant, he said, and we used to sell alcohol. And then I heard the verses about alcohol and I couldn't live with it any longer. Got rid of the restaurant, now I'm driving a taxi and I'm 10 times happier. There's a light in my heart because I know I'm not exacerbating that sickness. I'm not poisoning my customers. We need many of us to think about this as well. How can we extricate us from this? What do we do if in our corner shop some shuffling, broken person comes in, counts out whatever change has been given to him in the day and asks for cheap alcohol? We need to think about that. Are we part of the problem or could we be part of the solution? Let us all consider this and consider it as we pray and as we face the Lord of the world. But the zakat, the zakat is not a choice, that's what we must do. What a difference it would make if the ummah brought out its zakat. Why do we say ikhraj was zakat? The bringing out of zakat rather than the giving of zakat because it doesn't belong to us anyway. You're bringing it out, you're not giving it. It's not really a charitable donation. Somebody else's money that you're just looking after. And the wisdom of it is that it isn't really very much. It's not a horrific burden. One pound in every 40, people can deal with that. But there are super rich. London is the capital of Muslim wealth. Ali Shir Osmanov, a couple of years ago, London resident, was regarded as the richest Muslim in the UK. If you have a billion pounds, nobody can touch it if you're only paying income tax. But the zakat is a tax on wealth. If you have a billion pounds, every year you have to bring out 25 million. That's a lot of money. There are major charities that have that as their entire annual budget. And then after four years, it's 100 million. A tenth of your wealth. So it gets nibbled away. Islam doesn't like money to just sit and rot like a fruit that's slowly stagnating and fills with worms and is just corrupting. Use it. Don't be like Tutankhamun and hoard your gold uselessly for eternity. Uh, make use of it. You'll feel better. So, 
as we begin the new year, and as we recall the story of the Hijra, and as we consider and calculate our zakat obligations, let's think locally. Let's think about the homeless. Let's think about all those refugees and asylum seekers. Let's think about those Muslims who are going to be in fuel poverty or already are. Inshallah, let this be a mosque not just of prayer and repentance, a mosque not just of prayers, but a mosque of payers as well. Let it be a beehive that produces the honey of human service. Let us all be uplifted by that. Let us be exemplary, a lighthouse, as the world moves further and further into crazier and crazier forms of inequality that no economic system seems able to deal with. Communism tried. Kill so many people to try and bring about an equal society. I'm old enough to remember the Soviet Union. In the 1980s, those people were poor, living on potatoes and soup, vodka. There were luxury shops. Tourists could visit them. All of the latest fancy stuff from the West was there. But ordinary Russians weren't allowed in. You had to be a party member to go into those shops. So equality, nope. No human ideology has ever succeeded in creating that. But let's just look to this obligation, not an option, not a theory, but an obligation of zakat, and see what difference that can make to our souls and to our communities, inshallah. So may Allah forgive us what we have done wrong in the past year and help us to reflect and to do better in the coming year and to make this a year of victory and success and prosperity for the Muslims through the following of the Sunnah of the Chosen One. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa li sa'ili al-Muslimin innahu huwa al-Ghafur al-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa. Wa salamun ala ibadihi alladhi nastafa. Usikum wa nafsi bi taqwa Allah fa innahu khayru zaad. Wa iyaakum wa muhtathatu umur. Fa kullu muhtathatin bid'ah. وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار واعلموا أن الله قد أمركم بأمر عظيم أمركم بالصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين فقال جل ثناؤه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم إنا عبادك وبنو عبادك وبنو إمائك ماض فينا حكمك عدلا فينا قضاءك نسألك بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أو أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك أن تجل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا وجلاء أحزاننا وذهاب همنا وغمنا وأن تجل الحياة زيادة لنا من كل خير وأن تجل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ووفق الله مولاة أمور المسلمين إلى العمل بكتاب الله وصنة سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة